Hey, this is Ronald Carroll from Mad Skills University. Today I want to do this lesson for beginners, people who are either new to DaVinci Resolve 18 or video editing. What I want to do is give you a better grip on how it works and what's going on behind the scenes in Hollywood. For example, I'm going to show you the top nine video editing cuts used in Hollywood. I'm going to also show you the top eight or nine smooth and seamless transitions used in Hollywood. And lastly, the top 11 camera angles used in Hollywood. By the way, if you're using Filmora, I did these exact same lessons in Filmora for Filmora last year, and they are linked below. So we're going to start with the top nine video editing cuts used in Hollywood, beginning with the standard cut. I provided video assets for you for this. And the first two we're going to bring down are going to be the two girls dancing. That's going to lead us to a standard cut, an action cut, and a jump cut. And then we'll do a match cut and do all the cuts and show you what they look like and how to do them. Let's go ahead and get rid of the media here. Pop that out. So a standard cut is basically when I just take two clips and bring them together. And make sure snapping's on. Now we're going to do what we call action cut. On an action cut, you can cut on almost anything someone does as long as their movement, their head moving up, them getting up. So these two are together. The problem is she's covering a lot of the screen, which is good, but she's not. And make them about the same size. Transform her. Let's see how close it is to this one. She might be a little bit too big now. That's okay. But what we want to do now is look at the action. And we want to get them going the same way. So what I'll do is I can cut this right here and I'm gonna try to get her going the same way. And get her about right there. And you wanna get them both moving in the same direction. Let's try that. Okay, now she's too late. Let's get her going a little bit quicker. like that. So let's try that one. Let's enlarge it. Control F is in prank. So that, now I made her too big, but that would be an action cut. If they look up, then the next scene is upstairs. That's still an action cut. Anything that moves is action. Think of it that way. Jump cuts, sometimes if I want to speed up time, I can jump cut and put dissolves between them. Go down to right here and then make a cut. Then I'll go over to right here, I'll make a cut. Repeat that process going down to where you think cuts should be made. Cause now we're just jumping down the video. So then all you would do is just bring these together like this. And that would just be a better way of speeding up time. You see how slow and long this video is? So if I jumped it right here. You know, he's more up the road, but you can make bigger jump cuts as well. Now we can move on to a match cut. And I provided two videos for you. So one is of a man walking in shoes and the other one is of a man or someone walking on the beach. Now normally what you would do is match the color you make sure the speed's gonna match on these two videos. And you want them doing the same thing. So right now when his right foot hits, I can change to this guy's right foot hitting. Go to the right there. I can make a cut. I'm doing this quick, but I think you'll get the point. Right when it plants, I'll delete that. And see if I can get these to match. Now we just have this. So as you can see, I have a few videos here for the cutaway. And one good cutaway that's really becoming very popular now is just a drone cutaway. And she's doing yoga. Just cut this right here. But then what you can do 
is give people a better idea of her surroundings. So you can bring down something like this. So she'll go from, then we can do this. So our main subject is the lady doing yoga. So this will be my long shot. Now I can cut away and show other parts of the beach and let people know that hey she's actually on a beach and this wouldn't be that long it'll be probably a second I can show water for a second or two and then of course you just pan around show the ocean and get back to her and then this is another one where I show around a woman doing yoga on the water so this would be a wide angle and we had the long shot in the beginning now we're showing the beach. So this is what will be considered a cutaway. But it also gives you B-roll. That's why I say shoot all around your subject all the time. Now we're gonna move on to a J-cut. And the J-cut is when audio leads you to the next video. I provided assets for these as well. So we have a lady stressed out at work. Then of course we have an airplane taking off and we have the beach. So this will be a J-cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the audio and I'm going to bring the audio over here right onto this video. So this audio is going to start and we'll turn it down a little bit, just a little bit. And bring it back a little bit more and then turn it down. Because I want that audio to lead me into the next video. Then I'll bring this right here. And we can just have a hard cut on this. Let's see how that will look. So that should be how we get led into the next video. And you're going to have to play around with this. But this is basically what we're doing. So that's how that will play. So the audio led us into the next video. And if we hear a train track, if we hear anything like that, the sounds of a beach, we know that, okay, we're going to the beach. But that's what a J-cut is. Let me show you that one more time, though. And make it a little more emphatic. I'm going to bring this back a little bit more. Now, an L-cut is different. These are used a lot in cross-cutting parallel editing when you have two people arguing back and forth and I'm going to talk more about cross-cutting later and this is, will be your typical back and forth right cross-cutting parallel editing so that's what a cross-cut is and this is also used a lot in cross-cutting or parallel editing you have people back and forth on the phone or a car chase back and forth and this is how we're going to combine some of these video editing techniques and that's how they make movies look so cool so in this scene over here the camera's on him he's talking but what happens is normally while he's talking she'll start talking so the camera's still on him but you're hearing her voice and her argument then the camera will switch to be on her and it happens all the time when it's over the shoulder like this. They also do what they call cross-cutting. So when I went from him to her, to him to her, that's parallel editing or cross-cut. Let's move on to cross-cutting. And I just showed you cross-cutting. So basically cross-cutting is when you're going back and forth. I'm gonna give you another example though. I have a race here. What you wanna do is do a lot of jump cut. So in this particular video clip, the guy out in points in blue, at this point he's already gone. They're not going to catch him. What I can do here is do some jump cuts and do some parallel editing. And then maybe I can cut this here. And I'm going to just, I'm doing this fast. But even though we knew the guy lapped him by showing this, now he's coming in first. And then I can go back and show him and then show the other guy and go keep going back and forth. So by doing long angles, doing jump cuts, and I can go back and forth showing, say, to make it appear as if it's a race between those two to the fish. 
And then at the end of that, I could bring in the beginning clip where they all started together. Race, and that's called parallel editing as well. Another way to do that is if you have somebody on the phone and then they, you're showing at different locations and they're showing this person, then they show that person and this person, they're arguing or, cha or you know working out a plan, whatever it is. Going back and forth like that is called a cross cut. Now we're gonna move on to the last one. That's called a montage cut. A montage cut is when you're showing somebody getting ready for something. They're getting ready for war, getting ready for a fight, getting ready for a date. Wake up in the morning, you know, eat breakfast, get your hair cut, go buy a new suit. That's called a montage. You're building up to a date or a night going out to a nightclub. This will be a montage of a guy getting ready for a fight, and then we take him to fight there when he's actually going to fight that guy he's been getting ready for. Just an example. So those are your nine basic video editing cuts that you can use and you can mix them up and do a lot of things with these so don't be afraid to use them they're really fun to play with. Today I'm going to talk about smash cuts and reverse smash cut. And then we have this couple arguing. So if something happens there and say they're both driving down the street it's like ah so a smash cut is when you expect something to happen because the music is there you know two couples are arguing you expect something to happen but you just don't know what's going to happen you don't know what direction it's going to come from talking laughing and then all of a sudden they get you know broadsided and they roll over a cliff that's a different scenario right because then that would be it surprises you and there was another situation where, where I show this guy waking up in terror. Ah! Okay, let's move on to the top nine smooth and seamless transitions used in Hollywood. And we're going to start with the dissolve. I've also provided these assets for you or use your own. We're also going to use these same assets with our whip transition, which will be next. So try to make sure that the action in these videos, whichever ones you do use, are going in the same direction or that we can put them in the same direction. What we have here are just two clips put together and we're going to create a very basic dissolve between these two. The dissolve, the fade out, fade to black is used all the time. Go up here to effects and I'll go up to the very top and you'll see all of our dissolves. And what I want to see here when I click and get the left and right sort of handles that it's green green. Now I know I can bring down a cross dissolve and put it right between the two video clips. Click up here on transition and I'll see how many frames are being used here and how long it is. And I can also make adjustments down here. And I can keyframe that too. So that's a basic cross dissolve. There's cross fades, there's different things you can do. Or I can go up here also and click on this and I can change it to an additive dissolve. Let's see what that looks like. What I can also do is go over here and grab the dip to color dissolve. So if I wanna end on white or black, here's my color. Let's go ahead and fade this to white in between our transitions here. Let's see what that looks like. So that's how we're gonna fade to white. If I also wanna fade to black, I can do that as well in the transition. Let's play this first though. So there's your fade to black. I can also put a solid color here and go over here on this solid color and go to settings. And then we can keyframe the opacity of this fade to black. For example, normal opacity, take it back to zero. Then I'll start a keyframe, then take it down to the end, and take your opacity to 100. So now you'll get this slow fade to black. Conversely, change the color 
move it to generator change my color to white press ok and now I can fade that video to white and find the settings that work best for you but this is a smooth transition and that's what you want you want more seamless smooth transitions there's no tricks or effects here so now we're going to turn our attention to the whip transition and we're going to borrow a technique from our video editing cuts in particular we're going to borrow the action cut to do this so we want to cut on action here this guy has to be going down all the way down now it's pushing up and you want to have a little bit of upward or downward motion to it so we play these together this is what we would have so that's called a whip transition and you'll see that a lot in commercials and sometimes they'll actually move the camera where they'll whip you up okay next we're going to move on to our next seamless of course transition and this is going to be rotation so we're going to rotate this clip in between transitions so we'll go over here to video transitions you can just type in rotate or just go find rotate it's going to be down under fusion transitions and you'll see fusion transitions here and go down to rotate and just go ahead and grab it and you can pop it in like that and now we can click on transition Put that in the middle or the left side and this is what we'll have and that's a quick transition so you can of course create more frames to that grab the end of that and drag it out make it wider that that render but we'll see what it looks like anyway here's your bright flash so if you want to have a flash on the transition just grab that one drop it down instead Again, normally let that render. I'm not going to do that right now. And there's your like flares and flashes. You can use those. As far as like panning up or panning down, here's your glitch. And once you apply these transitions, you can go over here and change some of the parameters as well. Like here, fall and bounce. This is a good one as well. So we're going to grab this one and put it right there. Then what we can do, I can bring down a boom kind of a sound and put it like right there try it again move it up then what you want to do is probably click on this video and we'll cut that right here we want that to shake so let's get rid of our media pool have a little camera shake right here I know it's not render but that's okay okay so now I want to show you a few other things and we can use something called an adjustment layer. So what we're going to do now is if you go over to effects and then go to effects and type in adjustment or anything close to it, you're going to get this. It's called the adjustment clip. Let's go ahead and grab that and bring it down. So I can do anything in filters or in effects and I can bring that down so if I go to a digital glitch for example put that on the adjustment layer I go back up to filters take a Gaussian blur and you can bring down a lot of stuff from these two and put them right here and it will only apply to that clip we have those two effects there and if I click on that I can go up here to those effects and I can change some of the parameters here and open FX we have our Gaussian blur fusion open FX and you can apply quite a few things here so keep that in mind if you want to apply some kind of shake effect because it takes up the entire clip what you can do is just say I want to put that effect between this area and then apply anything to this by itself zoom zoom throughs zoom in and out those are also used a lot and what we're going to do here is zoom into her eyes about right there when she picks her head up so that's a good one right there so what we'll do is we'll cut that and make that our beginning 
and that's only going to last a few seconds to about right there and we can cut that click on this clip go over here to this drop down menu and we're going to go to dynamic zoom and all we're going to do is zoom into her eye wait till it opens I think right there will be a good location there we go so we're gonna we're looking at the zoom out portion that's what we're gonna zoom into so go to the end of the clip because that's what we're gonna zoom into her eye and we're gonna try to match it up with the video over here so let's go over here to dynamic zoom click on the clip remember that it starts on green and ends on red so take this down to the end Let's make that red really small here. Okay, now hold Alt and scroll down. Then we're gonna take this other picture so I'm going to find a spot on this picture that works. So with this picture, we're going to zoom off of her eye. So we'll go ahead and line this up. And then we'll go over to the next picture. And we'll click on this and we'll go down to dynamic zoom. And now I want to zoom off of her right eye on the second picture. Just go ahead and grab the start and reduce that. And on the tacos, we're zooming through the phone to the tacos versus bouncing off her eye and zooming back out. So this is a zoom in, zoom out. So we're going to zoom in on this eye and then zoom off of the other eye. This also works with zoom through. So if I take this video here, let's bring it in. Let's get rid of the audio. Not sure where I'm going to start this, but let's bring down a second video. So then you can zoom through or zoom out and play with different ideas. But here, once he takes that picture, I want to zoom through the phone. Now that picture should be the next picture. So what we're going to do, delete that right there. And this is not going to be perfect. And I have other videos in which I show you how to do this stuff in detail. We'll click on this picture, go back over here, click on this video. And we're going to have this, of course, start out where it should start. Then go back into our red here. And what I want to do, get about like that. Play that back, space bar. So right here is where you want to cut that. So now we're going to see how that looks. What I want to do though is when I snap that picture, at some point it's going to go to black. And then you have to have the other picture there right then and there. So that's how that will work. And those are just really some ideas of how you can employ really smooth and seamless transitions to make your videos look really cool. and this works in conjunction sometimes with montage cuts or cutaways so you can see how you can all blend them together even with the L cut you saw the, the camera change angles and I'm going to show you that next but that over the shoulder shot that's one of the 11 camera angles used in Hollywood so next we're going to talk about that and how again the camera angles with the smooth transitions with the top or essential nine video editing cuts. These are the top 11 camera angles you used in Hollywood today. I'm gonna to show you what they look like and I encourage you to employ these in your videos so they can look a lot more professional. And the cool thing is that you can use your phone to accomplish this, whether you have a gimbal or not. We're gonna start with the wide angle. What this does is gives your viewer a sense of location, surroundings, 
emotion. You can make the subject look sad, whatever you want to do. The long angle just ensures that you fit the subject totally in the frame like this. If I go from a long angle to a wide angle, that's a cutaway. The medium angle is really from the waist up, how you would view people in really normal life. And the eyes are always a quarter down the screen or three quarters up the screen. The cowboy angle is where you can see someone's guns. This goes back to Western movies, so it's from the knee up where you can see their gun. The tight shot is when it's usually dialogue back and forth like a cross cut. It shows expression, somebody's upset, you know, blowing them off, whatever. The detailed extreme close up is when you can zoom in on something and it is mystery there, depth, you don't know what's gonna happen, somebody presses that button. And also with extreme close cuts, close ups like this, you can actually get B roll. The low angle is like the hero shot, the wonder, dominance, confidence, the power kind of shot. And that's often called the hero shot. The high angle is makes it a subject look no more weak, inferior, vulnerable, like that, or they're in wonderment. The Dutch angle is when things look like they say uneasy, uh, not right, you kind of tilt the frame a little bit. And over the shoulder, this is normally done in conversation, cross-cutting, parallel editing when you go back and forth. Point of view, POV is just that. And the cutaway is when you kind of pan away from the subject, her, and show birds and show rocks in the water. Again, to give people a sense of what's going on around your subject. You always want to shoot all the way around your subject. Anything going by, shoot all around the subject. It gives you more B-roll and it gives you more footage, but just don't shoot your subject alone. So the wide angle, the long angle. So if I go from a long angle to a wide angle, that's a cutaway. 